We are also joined with Beta NYC staff members who are co-hosts, um, who will be uh, gardening the conversation and making sure that everything stays kosher. We are having kosher bagels. Um, uh, it's an honor to present to you. I'm Noel Hidalgo. I use the he, him pronouns, and I'm the executive director of Beta NYC. Um, today, we're going on a magical journey. Um, we used to have a little slide that says where we were physically, but now we're all digitally um, sc scattered across the city and probably the uh, universe. So uh, welcome to our virtual Lower Manhattan conversation um, about beta bagels. Um, uh, our agenda today uh, is kicking off. We're going to do some welcoming remarks. Uh, we will get into a little presentation from the Office of Data Analytics, uh, and then we will hop into a Q&A and discussion. Uh, we will have community announcements at the end. Uh, how community announcements works, if you can't say to the end, is if you just say that you've got an event, if you've got something going on, if you're hiring, uh, you're, it's an opportunity for you to come off mic or come, uh, uh, come to the mic and essentially uh, say something. Um, if you got to leave early and you got things to say, uh, drop them in the chat um, and we'll uh, reiterate them at the end. And then we hope to end by 1015. Um, virtual meeting norms. Uh, for those of you who are just coming to this planet um, after uh, many years of uh, being away, uh, please stay on mute. Uh, do use the raised hand functions. Um, so that way we can call on you. Um, you feel free to ask questions in the chat. Um, and if you misbehave, you will be booted. Um, so those are our virtual meeting norms. Um, that's how we like to engage. Um, and remember, everybody's here to engage with each other, ask questions, and, and learn. Um, so Beta NYC is uh, a small and mighty team. Uh, we are growing. Uh, Beta NYC staff members, feel free to in come off the, the, the camera or wave, uh, say hello. We are five full-time staff members, three apprentices, uh, three associates, and eight fellows. Um, our mission is to make it easier for all New Yorkers to use open data and access information. Uh, we have been at this game prior to the open data law. We started as a meetup, um, more or less discussing all things open government. Uh, we met a wonderful council member uh, who had this idea that we should have a piece of legislation that mirrored the uh, executive order that Barack Obama signed. Uh, that led to a two year long journey with a bunch of good government groups um, that led and culminate, uh, culminated in this, what we now call the city's open data law. Uh, we didn't stop there once the data law was passed. Uh, we were the users, the heavy users of the open data law uh, or the open data as it was then. Um, and we have since continued to fight for the users, to fight for you and fight for our friends and allies inside of city government to essentially be thinking through how do we use technology, data and design uh, to improve government operations, government services, and give us an opportunity to live in the century uh, that we actually have government reflect the century that we're living in. Uh, Beta NYC itself has uh, three concrete programs. Uh, we focus on teaching the next generation of how to engage in public interest technology through our fellowship and apprenticeship program. Uh, we have a civic data services lab. So I know some of you have used our radar program. If you ever need tech support when it comes down to open data, if you need a web form, if you're an elected official and you want to build a web app, uh, we are here to help you. Uh, and that is what our lab does. Um, and you can start off with a research and data assistance request, uh, publicly known as a radar. Um, and then lastly, we do our open data literacy programs and we do our uh, public programs, our public events, uh, which you are attending. Uh, and we are going to have a whole bunch of them uh, in the middle of March as part of Open Data Week. Um, that being said, welcome to one of our little uh, events that we call Beta Bagels. Um, Beta Bagels itself is a breakfast salon um, that we started. It is in the 
uh, it mirrors something that our friends in LA did called Data and Donuts. Um, this is an opportunity to bring civic stakeholders, I, ideally people inside a city government to kind of talk about what's going on with technology data and design inside of government operations. Um, we thank the Fund for the City of New York, the Manhattan Borough President, the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, and Rockefeller Brothers Fund for letting us uh, and giving us the framework to do what we do. Um, and once again, uh, if you want to see how the LAers do it, they got data and donuts and we give, we tip our hat um, and shake our jewelry um, and say thank you very much for inspiring us to do what we are now doing today. Today's guest star is Martha Norick, the Chief Analytics Officer uh, and uh, from the Office of Data Analytics. Um, we are so excited to have her because she is the longest serving Chief Analytics Officer that the city has ever seen, which is really, really, she has survived into the second, a second administration. Um, and now I'm going to uh, pass the microphone off to Martha uh, to continue the, her introduction. Uh, and to uh, do her slides. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's amazing. Thank you for that introduction, Noel. Four years. Uh, I have not served for four years, but is that the is that the record to beat? Uh, no, no. You are you're like in your fourth year. Three year three. You're like three years and change. Oh my god! I started in twenty twenty one. I guess yeah. I guess I'm in my. Is that right? Oh my gosh. Oh, what is time? Um, okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. I am uh, Martha Norick. I am the Chief Analytics Officer of the City of New York and the Director of the Office of Data Analytics. And I'm so excited to be here this morning. I um, am a big fan, obviously, of uh, our friends at Beta NYC and all of the work that we do together. Um, and I think, you know, this, uh, I'm hoping that I have a couple slides to go through just to kind of like introduce you to our office and the work that we do um, in government. Um, and then um, I, most of this event, though, is kind of a like AMA style, like you, you've got me here. What do you want to know about governments, about uh, career stuff, about my cats? I don't know, anything you want. Um, uh, so we'll, um, yeah, we'll dive in and maybe just tell you a little bit about the Office of State Analytics. Um, I, do you want me to take over driving the slides, Noelle, or do, would you... Or should I just say next slide? Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. We'll do that. Um, I think that might be easier. Okay, here we go. Share screen. All right. Can you guys see that? Does that look full screeny and awesome? Okay, cool. So, um. The New York City Office of Data Analytics um, was created in 2012 during the Bloomberg administration. Um, the first chief analytics officer was a gentleman named Mike Flowers, who now actually does um, work with the um, General Services Administration and the federal government, um, also trying to help the federal government do more, uh, d d use data in a, in a smarter way. Um, it was initially, you know, but the concept of sort of working with city administrative data obviously way predates 2012. Operations research has been a title and a, and a job, you know, capacity in city government for a very, very, very long time. The thing that has sort of been advancing, obviously, is like the computing power and the ability to um, to to. Um, work with big data sets without sort of, you know, punch cards or um, lots and lots of little index cards or all of the ways that people um, uh, worked with data before we had the lovely, um, the lovely computing power that we all sort of take for granted these days. Um, the Office of Data Analytics was initially established by executive order. So for those of you government nerds out there, um, executive orders, uh, mayors can sort of say like, I, mayor, do declare that there shall be a mayor's office of blah, blah, blah. So there's a lot of mayor's offices of, of stuff. Um, generally, they are created by executive order, which means that a future mayor can come back and, be, and can say like, eh, we don't need a mayor's office of blah, blah, blah. We, we're going to not have a mayor's of, office of blah, blah, blah anymore. Um, but you'll, you know, you'll notice maybe that uh, ma mayors can't do that um, to city agencies. Um, and the reason for that is that city agencies are in the charter, um, which is the sort of, you know, foundational document 
document uh, governing uh, city, uh, the city. Um, and uh, in 2018, the Office of Data Analytics joined the charter. So we are now a mayor's office uh, that uh, exists um, in in perpetuity. Uh, you would have to go back and amend the charter, which is possible. And you may have voted on charter amendments um, as as New York City voters, if you if you do uh, choose to exercise that franchise or have the ability to exercise that franchise. Um, uh, you you may have uh, voted on a charter amendment, so it's not impossible. But uh, we we sort of um, became became a member of the of the charter club in 2018, and then um, the mayor's office of data analytics has kind of bounced around a little bit in terms of where it is in the in the structure of government. So another thing that mayors have the ability to do is sort of determine how um, how offices are organized, like who reports to who, um, what kind of deputy mayors are there. Um, each each mayor has kind of their own, you know, um, take on how they want to how they want to organize and assemble a government. Um, and so um, initially, the mayor's office of data analytics reported directly into the deputy mayor for operations. Um, during the de Blasio administration, the mayor's office of data analytics reported to the director of the mayor's office of operations, which then reported to the deputy mayor for oper uh, the first deputy mayor. Um, and then uh, when Mayor Adams became the mayor, he chose to move the office of data analytics along with the office of information privacy and New York City Cyber Command. Um, into um, one office uh, called the Office of Technology and Innovation that also houses the agency formerly known as Do It. Um, so now we are sort of one big, um, one big technology-related umbrella organization um, with a cool ombre logo, and we are. Um, uh, I'm speaking to you from uh, Two Metro Tech um, in downtown Brooklyn. So if you're ever in downtown Brooklyn and want to come pay us a visit, come come on by. We have. Uh, I don't know. It's. I think downtown Brooklyn is a great place to to be. So, um, we'll take you to we'll take you to various bagel stops and um, other delightful things. All right. Um, we have sort of three main um practice areas at the office. We have um an analytics team. So we have a few data scientists that do sort of direct analytics projects. They work with city data. They um they frequently get called in to um, work on projects that involve integrating data from multiple city agencies. So um, another fun fact about city government, um, I think sometimes people assume that there's kind of like one big database where all the city's data lives and the data is all going from wherever it's being collected into this one database. And, you know, our office kind of like sits on top of that database and we can just be like, give me all the kids from the DOE, give me all the like trash cans from sanitation. Like, I just want to pull all the data and it's all there in one spot. Um, that is not true. I think one thing, you know, you can almost kind of think of the city of, of city government as like 54, 54 separate little, 54, at least 54 separate little like companies almost, right? That have their own governing structure, that have their own technology, that have their, you know, that do their own um, uh, planning and processes when it comes to data and technology. And so, um, when we are um, bringing data together, we're we're sort of very similarly to when folks use the open data platform, right? Where you're like, I need, oh, I'm looking for data from this agency. And then maybe this agency has this data set. And like, how could I knit that together? Like I could use geography, which is a common way that we kind of marry data together because things happen in in generally kind of like in a place and those places we can match together or maybe it's um it's people like we have um information about um uh we know who uh maybe we were, we're working on a project to understand sort of um who's accessing um uh workforce development services so who's who are the people that have come to a small business services like resume clinic and we have their names and addresses and we want to match them against people who have then gone on to be placed in a job so we could see like what percentage of people that did a resume session went on to to have uh to get a full-time job but those are two separate data sets so we have to match them together on something um so uh well and we can i can talk about some more examples of analytics projects that are that are team does but we are all one thing that's important to note is that we are not the only analytics professionals in the city of new york by a long shot there's probably others of you on this call um there is a uh, new york city government has i think almost three hundred thousand municipal employees it's down a little bit from from the peak but um 
it's about the size of global Starbucks. It's a huge, it's a huge, it's, there's a lot. And that, you know, that also includes all the teachers and all the firefighters and all the police officers. And like, you know, there's some big workforces out there, obviously, but it's a very, very, very large organization. And if we had, if we were trying to do all the data for the entire city of New York, um, I, we would not, we would be, we would not make it. Um, so we work with really, really, really talented and, um, and knowledgeable, um, uh, friends throughout city government who also do um, data and analytics work in agencies. So, um, you know, our our remit is fun because we get to kind of, you know, both work on special projects, think about, you know, work on sort of big projects that involve multiple agencies. Um, and then also sometimes we get to just kind of like get curious about something and like nose around in the data in data a little bit, which we frequently do in open data, um, just to kind of see, hey, like, what is what is this thing where like I saw, you know, I I was listening to a podcast this morning and I heard this lovely term called me search, which I guess is like a social science thing where like the genesis of how you get interested in your research is it's like something related to you, which I think as all of us um, New Yorkers, you know, frequently see things in our day where you're like, hi, I wonder, I wonder about that. And then you can, you know, go and look and look in data and see what you can find. Um We've already talked about it a little bit. Um, our our um, our office runs um, from the government perspective the Open Data Program, which is um, I think the absolute coolest public program, um, just government program, just program all around um, in New York City. Um, we work with a network of open data coordinators at every city agency and office to make sure that agencies and offices are complying with New York City's really excellent open data law. Um, and, you know, we also very much try to go beyond compliance, right? We are not, you know, we're not solely checking checkboxes to be like, has this person submitted this data set, yes or no? Obviously, that's very important. But also, um, we um, work with partners like Beta NYC, like the team at Data Through Design to do public programming, um, both in our big festival of celebrating open data called Open Data Week, which is coming up in March. Um, and I'm sure um, uh, Zachary or Oliver will drop some more details uh, in the chat there. Or if you're on the, if you if you know about this event, you're probably going to hear about Open Data Week. Um, it is a really, really, really cool event um, with two, uh, like, with um, a bunch of free public programming and then also uh, amazing art exhibit put on by the data through our partners at Data Through Design and then also and and then sort of culminating in this amazing day called School of Data where we all come together at the CUNY Law School in Long Island City. Um, and you get to hear from all sorts of cool um, folks using data in lots of different interesting ways, learn stuff. There's lunch. It's amazing. Um, uh, you'll probably, I don't know, you'll probably get to meet both um, my daughter and uh, potentially Noelle's uh, child as well. So um, <laughs> you also come for the cute toddlers. Um, so that's open data. And then we also have a team, um, a growing team um, of folks who work on data engineering and governance. So um, the, uh, the, the, the big challenge of, of analytics and the big challenge of open data, right, is like, you know, we all, we all can work faster and work smarter and work um, uh, and get to kind of where we want to be more quickly if data is well organized, if it's well documented, if it's stewarded, all of these things that, you know, we really, we'd really love to, um, you know, when any of us who work directly with data, like get a data set, it's like, it's like Christmas morning, or I don't know, choose your holiday of choice, when you get a beautiful data set that it's like, here's all the columns and here's what all the columns mean. And here are the things you need to know about the data set. And here's this thing that happened in 2012 that changed the definition from this to this. And you're like, oh, amazing. Like everything I need to know, this is what we want. Um, but the thing that works against us here is that sort of aforementioned, like at least 55 separate little companies um, where people have their own um, practices and, and standards and sort of traditions around data governance and stewardship. So we are trying really hard to be a resource to, um, working really hard to be a resource to everybody that works in with data, with the city's data, both from the public perspective, but also for folks who work in the city and um, um, city employees who are, who are, um, uh, who face a lot of the same challenges as people from the public do when they work with the data set for the first time, right? Like, what does this mean? How is this data generated? How do I understand, like, the difference between this column and that column? Like, we have all those same questions when we work with data sets. And wouldn't it be amazing if we had really, really, really good documentation practices throughout the city um, 
for uh, for folks who work with data so that you know we can all get get moving as quickly as possible. And we really look to the to the work that the open data team does in in building um, building good data documentation for public data sets. Um, and and it's like a nice virtuous circle, right? Because all of the data comes is you know generated by city agencies or city offices. Um, they're having to document it for open data anyway. Can how can we sort of like make sure that the data quality and the data documentation and the 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 processes that move data from one place to another are all really just sort of like well well oiled well oiled well documented machines. So um, I hope you all enjoy our little pixelated graphics of those three practices, and that's a little bit about us. Um, I kind of talked about this already, like what we do um, on the analytics team, but uh, yeah, a high level, like we can, we sometimes just give advice. Like people come to us and say, I'm trying to solve this problem. Like what's, what do you think, um, would be a good method for that? Um, we do kind of like office hours style, um, consultations. Um, we do projects. We sometimes get called in if there's like a big, um, uh, like a few, a few years ago now, there was a, um, a big Legionnaires outbreak in the Bronx. And, and it was this big sort of like data challenge of like, where are all of the cooling towers in New York City, you would think that that would be a pretty easy question to answer, but it actually wasn't. And the inspections of the cooling towers were different from the list of the cooling towers, and it wasn't matching up. And so uh, data scientists from Moda kind of got called into um, to, to really help kind of like figure out um, how to make sense of all of these different disparate data sets around cooling towers. Um, and we also sometimes get named in legislation. Um, so uh, there's a piece of legislation that the city council passed in 2018 um, surrounding um, about uh, pay equity data in the city. So looking at um, and specifically around city employees and, and understanding sort of uh, um, the different patterns of compensation in the city workforce. So we got actually were explicitly named in the, the legislation to like help with this analysis or perform this analysis and also make a data set available to the public, which is on open data. You can check it out. Um, yeah, I mean, again, sort of like high level, the types of questions we're trying to answer with data, um, it could be sort of like descriptive, like how many, how many cooling towers are there in the Bronx, right? Like, that's just sort of like a, how can we, how can we use data to help us understand sort of like what is happening or what has happened? I would, I would sort of call this more like, you know, this is where you do end up doing a lot of counting, which is so much harder than it sounds. Um, Sesame Street, did not tell you the truth about counting. It is like very tricky. Um, uh, diagnostic analytics. So trying to understand sort of the relationships between things. And those of you who are, um, you know, deep in the social sciences understand that like, it's really hard to understand causality um, in data or just causality in the real world, right? Like it's, there's a lot of different things happening all the time and understanding sort of like what ex exists in relationship to what you have to try to really kind of understand and control for the things that you can control for. Um, Predictive analytics or prescriptive analytics. These are, you know, these are kind of the like we're headed into kind of like modeling and um, and using data to try to um, to try to um, uh, to try to sort of like classify or or think about what might happen um, or what uh, or like ordering lists. This is a very frequent, um, and we can talk more about this. Like. One of the types of problems that we work with a lot in the city are sort of scarce resource optimization problems. Um, sometimes, and again, like we, this is, these are big philosophical questions around like, why are there scarce resources in government? That's uh, another conversation, but let's, let's say for example, right? Like um, one of the projects that we've worked on is helping to um, order buildings for um, tenant harassment, the likelihood that tenant harassment is happening in that building. Um, so we know um, we have, you know, we have, there's a, there was a task force of city building inspectors that came from both Department of Buildings and also from um, the Housing Preservation and Development, HPD. Um, usually what happens with inspections in the city is somebody calls, they complain about something, or they, they tell you, they tell the city that something's wrong in their building. And then the city says, okay, well, that type of, that type of um, problem goes to the Department of Buildings, or that type of problem goes to the Housing Preservation and Development. And an inspector from one of those places goes out to look at that building, and they look for the thing that they were, at, you know, has to look for and they say oh yeah like the heat is not on in this building or the hot water is not on this building like the violation of the landlord you gotta fix it great um but tenant harassment is one of those things that like the the types of the forms that tenant harassment can take could end up going to lots of different agencies it could look like um you know sometimes landlords 
um, try to like annoy you by uh, by not being good, uh, um, uh, by doing lots of, or they're trying to like flip apartments, right? So they're doing lots of construction. There's lots of construction dust. They're not doing the proper things they need to do to clean up that construction dust and and noise. And they're just sort of like making your life miserable until you until you leave the apartment. You can't take it anymore. So they're sort of like active harassment measures. Some of those go to the buildings department. Some of those go to HPD. There's like neglect type of things, you know, just like not fixing stuff. The elevators don't work. Blah blah blah. Like on and all of these different types of complaints kind of just get sorted into their little like you know I almost think of like like you know cubby holes in an old timey mailbox, right? Like you you slot your little inspections in, but there's no one sort of looking at that full picture of a building. So if what we wanted to do with this with this project is sort of say like considering all the different ways that people can kind of let us know like all these little signals that can people can send out about tenant harassment, how could we order buildings so that when these when this joint inspection resource goes out, which is, you know, a little bit of a scarce resource. They can only inspect so many buildings in a given week, in a given year, in a given month. Um, how can we make sure that we're that they're going to buildings where we think there's like the most, they're most likely to find tenant harassment? Um, so that kind of like ordering of lists is a very common um, application for analytics in the government context. Um, Oh, great. I've already talked about half of these. So this is I'm so glad we have these slides to help me keep me on track. Um, we just talked about tenant anti-harassment. Um, another like scarce resource optimization problem that we work on with the um, Civic Engagement Commission is putting translators at poll sites. Um, this is another one where, again, like I think there's a very valid discussion and, and uh, talk to be had about like, why do we have scarce resources when it comes to translators, right? Like, why doesn't every poll site have a translator for every language? But the situation that the Civic Engagement Commission finds themselves in is that they can they can deploy um, a certain number of translators across the city. They Those translators speak, you know, a different set of languages. Um, how can we, um, you know, using the using census data, um, data about sort of, um, it's called the the LEP data, the limited English proficiency, um, is the is the way that the census phrases it. Um, so, uh, how can we sort of look for New Yorkers that um, are of voting age, are probably registered to vote, and may um, may be looking to translation services for assistance in voting? Um, and how can we sort of deploy those translators strategically across the city so that they're in the places where the most people um, might utilize their services? Um, uh, we also um, have work uh, have a cool project that we've worked on with the Law Department's Risk Management Unit around sort of understanding the relationship between street level activity and underground infrastructure failure. Um, there's so much stuff under the streets of New York, guys. It's crazy. Nobody even knows where all what all of it is. Um, that's the takeaway from that project. Um, Okay, I'm gonna just kind of zip through here. We talked about Open Data Week. This was an amazing um, art piece uh, where the um, artist died. Um, each of this is a bar graph, a woven bar graph um, died uh, with the um, of the of the sort of food waste data set, I believe. So like how much um, how much food waste is entering New York City's um, New York City's trash system every day. Um, and it is uh, those 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 textiles are dyed with the type of food that they represent, which is so cool. Um, I love the data through design exhibition, and I um, can't wait to see you all there this week. Um, oh, open data ambassadors! Um, raise your hand if you are an open data ambassador. I bet there are a few folks in the in the room who are open data ambassadors. Um, this is a really cool program that we do in collaboration with uh, Beta NYC to train um, data enthusiasts from all different backgrounds to um, teach a curriculum of how to use the open data website to answer questions about things that are happening in your own community. Um, and the thing that I really love about this is that, you know, it's not just city employees, it's also folks who um, uh, uh, are maybe our librarians or just um, you know, curious neighborhood folks who who use open data to answer questions about their own neighborhood and want to help, you know, evangelize or help people sort of understand how to access and use the open data site. 
Um, and I, we, uh, the curriculum is sort of built around the 311 data set, which is a data set that everybody, um, everybody loves and is, you know, definitely one of the coolest data sets that is available on open data and also one of the hardest ones to work with just because the size of the data is so big. Um, uh, yeah, and, and I, I don't have the stats off the top of my head of how many trainings and how many people we've trained, but it's it's very big now and it's growing every day. And we're um, if you're interested in becoming an ambassador, um, we'd love to talk to you about it. So um, yeah, that's the Open Data Ambassadors Program. There will be Open Data 101 trainings all throughout Open Data Week. I probably will do at least one, maybe two, um, maybe three. Who knows? I love doing them. Um, and there will be lots of other folks um, get, doing sort of having these sessions available all throughout the week and then also all throughout the year. So if you're interested in coming to a training too, um, if this is, uh, you know, Open Data is kind of a tool that you're that you're new to, um, we'd also love to see you. Um, okay. The last thing I want to talk about is Analytics Exchange. So this is a cool program that our office runs that is a community of practice for folks who work in data and analytics in city government. So if you're if you're a city employee and this is like news to you, um, I, we would love to see you at Analytics Exchange. It's a quarterly event. We, um, we uh, do... Um, throughout the year um, and it takes a bunch of different forms. We also, we sometimes we do sort of like lunch and learny type stuff where we, or like share sharing of interesting projects that agencies are doing, which is always great because again, like sometimes New York City feels like just a bunch of different little companies where people are doing cool stuff. And like, how do you, how do you kind of surface those interesting projects and those interesting questions that people are answering that might be relevant to other folks across the city. Um, uh, and analytics exchange is a great way to do that. We also um, started a few years ago um, running a yearly learning summit, which is a um, two day, uh, two day event um, that uh, is really focused on sort of like hard, hard skills, building. So um, how do you make a map in Python? How do you, um, how do you use GitHub? How do you, um, how do you write a really good data sharing agreement? Um, so really kind of nitty gritty, like we hope that participants walk away with like really good kind of like cheat sheets, code snippets, templates, things that they can use um, and apply in their work for the city. Um, this is a community just for city employees. Um, I'm, I almost feel kind of bad telling you all about it if you're not a city employee. I'm afraid you're not um, You're not invited, but um, we do, uh, I, I hate even saying that, that's terrible. We, we like to include everybody, but um, the, uh, um, uh, a lot of the types of programming and the, and the, um, Work that happens in analytics change is very similar to the work um, that work the beta does. The work that um, the the types of programming you'll see during Open Data Week. Um, so um, yeah, happy to happy to share um, more about that or answer any questions about that. Okay, I think I just ran my mouth for a very long time, so I'm going to stop and turn it over to <laughs> um, to you all. And and I think Noel and Kate and 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 folks have have some questions ready to go if if folks uh, in the in the meeting don't have any, um, we won't just sit in silence until 10.15. Um, you are so timely. It is 9.45 <laughs> and this is exactly when we're supposed to be getting to questions. Yeah. Um, so great work. Um, I'm going to just ask you very briefly, you know, like, um, what what is your day your average day look like um you know i i know that you went to a fancy ai summit this past week but what what <laughs> that's what, what that's not yeah. a thing i usually do <laughs> yeah i um it's a good question i i think my my day is generally um i don't get to do as much individual contributor work as i maybe would like to um sometimes you know, I, I, I worked as a data scientist, as a data analyst. Um, that's kind of how I got into this role. So I really love working directly with data and I still do kind of keep my um, finger in the, I don't know, dip my toes in the pool sometimes, although sometimes to the annoyance of those who I'm working with because I also have to do a lot of other things. And so I'm not like the best individual contributor. Um, but my my day generally, my days generally look like a fair number of kind of like project check-ins, like a lot of project management related activities, um, talking with folks. Um, I do a lot of kind of like requirements gathering or like just like listening sessions. Like um, here's a, you know, we're having this problem. Like we think, we think the Office of Data Analytics can help solve it. Um, and, you know, 
depending on the problem, some people come with more or less kind of knowledge or understanding about what data, like whether the problem is a data problem or it's actually sort of a like technology problem or an applications pro problem. Um, so I do a kind of a lot of like, um, like almost like clinic sessions basically where I like, you know, listen, listen to people describe the problem that they're facing. And then I try to kind of like make a diagnosis and, and figure out like what's the best resource for them to solve that problem. Um, uh, that, you know, it's not always us. That is the, that's the right, um, that, you know, sometimes, sometimes the problem that they have is like better solved by somebody else and we can help, help them figure that out. Um, I, um, you know, I also, I, you know, I, I am, one of the cool things I get to do is like be a, be the sort of face of open data and the face of, you know, one of the faces of open data, open data has many faces, but like get to be a cheerleader and, and, and sort of like public, um, public speaker on, on things, uh, related to our work and to the open data program and all that kind of cool stuff. So, um, uh, you know, there's, there's, you know, events like this, or later today, I'm going to the city's cyber academy graduation, you know, some fun stuff like that. Um, and yeah, and then I, yeah, we try, you know, we, we, we also like, I sometimes get to learn about new technologies or like, um, I try to, you know, stay current about the different, um, uh, sort of like new things that people are learning or trying, reading research, doing, doing kind of, you know, trying to just make sure that we're, um, uh, current on, on things that, that might come up in the city or that might be useful. Um, the, um, uh, the event that Noel just referenced was, um, sponsored by the Robin Hood Foundation, which is an anti-poverty philanthropy in the city. Um, and they had a bunch of, it's actually run by Richard Bury. He used to be a deputy mayor, um, in the de Blasio administration for health and human services, um, or not health and human services. Well, he was strategic. I don't know. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Richard. Um, uh, uh, he was a very cool deputy mayor in the de Blasio administration and he now runs this, this big, um, philanthropy and they had a, um, they had an event sort of talking about the different, um, uh, the, the, the sort of hook was AI for opportunity. So, um, ways that, uh, AI can be, um, used, um, or not used, uh, to, to help folks get access to benefits programs or to, um, to sort of think about it as, as, um, you know, it's, it's like a, you know, tools have lots of different things that can be used for good or evil. So some, some, some interesting sort of research and, and tools that people are building. There was a presentation by an organization that is using, um, that wants to use AI to help decode medical bills, which I thought was kind of interesting. So like, you know, using, using, um, using AI to, to look at those sort of like very inscrutable bills that you can receive from a hospital or from your doctor's office that have all the different like ICD codes on them. And like, you know, checking to see if you got billed build three times for like one dose of medicine or whatever. Um, anyway, some interesting things. So yeah, it's a fun day. I have a fun day. I have fun days. My days are fun. <laughs> Great. Um, I'm going to start pulling some questions here. So what Great. are the primary uh, analytics tools that Mo uh, Moda or the Office of Data Analytics uses? Um, and I'm going to combine that with the, you know, what are the touchstone data sets that your office that like every analyst in your office is like required to more or less have a good grasp on. They don't have to know it. They just have to know how to play with it. Yeah, I think the really foundational one is SQL, actually. So um, a lot of the city's data are stored in relational databases, and we work frequently with relational databases. And there's kind of a little bit of like no way around knowing enough SQL to get data out of a relational database. Um, so I would say that that's kind of a really foundational skill that we that analysts in our office have. Um, and you know we we have folks in our on our team that um, you know the open data team. We have we have a wide variety of technical skills. So I'm sort of speaking about more kind of like the data science um, uh, team here. So don't don't feel like oh I don't know how to write SQL. Like there's nothing I could ever do with the Office of Data Analytics. We have we have folks who do lots of different types of things. Um, so uh, but from a for the data science team, um, everybody everybody has to know enough SQL to be a little dangerous. Um, we use open source tools generally like Python or R. Um, we don't use Stata or SAS or some of those, like, um, some of the licensed, um, products. Um, we, 
you don't have to know Python and R. You kind of have to know one or the other. Um, and we have, uh, right now our data science team is like evenly split between Python users and R users, um, which uh, which is great. So like, you know, and folks who work in data and analytics across the city, sometimes, sometimes people have R questions, some people have Python questions. And so we can help with both of those, um, both of those, which is great. Um, and, uh, yeah, we also, you know, we've, we use, we have used and we do use various different sort of um, uh, visualization or mapping programs that sometimes have licenses. So the city has Power BI licenses, some the city has Tableau licenses. Um, we also, you know, have built shiny applications, you know, that, that don't require licensing, but do require sort of server, um, a server to host them. Um, we have used Carto in the past, um, to build sort of like quick little web maps that can be easily shared, um, which is great. Um, yeah, we have, we have a bunch of different, um, bunch of different tools that we've used over time and sort of, I, I really, um. I'm I'm very tool agnostic. Like I think there are lots of ways to to accomplish the things that people are trying to accomplish. Um and the thing that is much more important is that your code is replicable, that your code is version controlled, that you document what you're doing, um, that somebody else, you know, could pick up your code and run it again and know, you know, kind of be able to see exactly what you were doing. Um, so I think those are the things I, I, I think I have more sort of like principles that I think are important than sort of like favorite tools or, um, or sort of like we, you have to use this tech stack or that tech stack or this tool or that tool or whatever. I know, I know sometimes people have really strong feelings about, about those kinds of things, but I, I think I'm a little bit more agnostic. Awesome. Um, there's some really great questions around like uh, more or less how your office engages with other agencies. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of sprinkle those onto this conversation right now. So how does your office um, offer support to other agencies if the agency is having a hard time getting their open data together or doing analytics? Yeah, um, <clears throat> we are, um, we have a couple of different ways we can help. Um, we, the, on the open data side, we have a really wonderful program staff um, with a wide variety of, of sort of skills. Um, we, I think are also, you know, the we are facing the same sort of headwinds that I think a lot of folks in city government are with just sort of like we're all kind of being asked to do more with less right now. Um, we are not immune to that. So we, um, you know, I think uh, um, we appreciate your patience if you are trying to have us help you with something and we don't have enough bandwidth to do it. Um, but we are, um, you know, hopefully, I think we're all hoping that that might change in the future. Um, but uh, for open data questions, um, the open data, if uh, if you are an open data coordinator, hopefully you already have sort of a relationship with the open data team. You know um, who to talk to, um, Ariana or Alex or Kay or um, any of our really wonderful staff on the open. And Zachary is here, who um, is the director of the open data program. So, um, uh, you know, things we can help with there are sort of questions around documentation, questions about like, how should I structure a data set for, for release on open data? Is this a data set that's appropriate for releasing on open data? Um, you know, we, uh, the open data law um, has, uh, um, you know, is a, is a pretty expansive, um, is, it's pretty expansive in its definition of what should be open data, but folks who work with data that might involve personally identifying information, you know, might want to think about strategies for aggregating or sort of um, anonymizing that data so that it can still be put up on the open data portal, um, but doesn't compromise anybody's, um, anybody's uh, privacy. Um, so we can help with that. And also, um, we work with our partners at the Office of Information Privacy and in the General Counsel's Office um, to, to sort of work through those types of questions. If you have analytical questions or like data science questions, um, we do have a, an, an office hours form that that you can that you can use to get in touch with us. Um, you also, um, you know, uh, we're not we're not huge. Uh, I think we have what like fourteen total people right now on in the office of data analytics. So we don't have kind of like a ton of like um, we have some we have some forms, but you're also welcome to just get in touch with us, <laughs> email us, or um, uh, the open data the open data help desk is is wonderful as well, and that is direct. We it's it's um 
either there are some forms in government where you send a form into the void and no one ever looks at it again and like nobody even knows where it goes this is not one of those forms it goes directly to Zachary and his team and they um uh they they answer all of those similarly with the with the office hours it comes to, to Oliver Oliver helps sort of triage um and and assess those um uh, assign one of us including me to, to talk about those um to get in touch with you um, we can also help, you know, uh, we can also help navigate other questions at OTI to some extent. There's the agency relations managers at OTI, which is sort of a, um, a, a newly souped up, revamped thing that Do It used to have. Um, it's run by Chenda um, Fructor, which some of you, if you've worked in the city, may have worked with before. She used to work at 311. Um, she's really wonderful. So um, we can help sort of, I know. I know OTI slash do it um, can sometimes be kind of an inscrutable black box of how do you get help for something. So we are, are um, always helpful, always try, always game to help try to kind of like help folks navigate um, to the extent that we can. We're always learning new things too about who does what in the city. So awesome. Did I all those questions? I feel like there were a couple questions and I. Oh, no, 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 okay. no. The, the, there, there are, there are so many questions um, and it's, there's so many great questions, uh, but you answered um asked, yes. okay. yeah uh, one one thing that i want to add on here is and i see that we have friends at the state and um in non-mayoral agencies um here how does your office work with non-mayoral agencies other elected officials and and state electeds can they come to you for advice and engage with you yeah absolutely i think uh, certainly from from for advice or questions around open data like we are we are available to all to all um there's some programming you know that we you know analytics exchange for example we we do sort of um uh it's specifically for um city employees although um I think you know if they're if you're if you work for the state and you're interested in something like just get in touch with us and we can sort of you know make sure that everybody is okay with with having the reason that we have it closed to city employees is so that people can talk about work that's not ready for sort of prime time yet um so um but if there's you know specific situations that people are interested in or or um learning summit is another thing where it's sort of less about sort of ongoing work and more skills building so we can we can um be more um open um yeah i mean if you if you've ever if we've ever worked bef together before you know i i love to talk and i love to, i'm happy to talk to anybody about anything at any time so um, that is, don't be a stranger don't be a stranger yeah don't feel bad we'll never we'll never be like oh don't talk to us like we'll always try to help you help you out got it um so uh, something that has come across in a number of different questions is you know we are now squarely in this weird world of large language models and artificial intelligence. Um, so how is your office thinking about uh, preparing for um, AI infused government? Uh, and, and uh, you know, how is your office exploring tools like chat GPT to help answer questions or, or large language models? That is such a good question. And it's such a big question. Um, I think a couple of things. One, I think one of the things that our office really understands and can help people understand is the, are the sort of limitation, not even limitations really, but like the way to really understand the nuance of the generation of city data sets, like how does this data actually come to be? So 311 is a great example, right? Three, the 311 data set, it's huge. It's like, amazing this amazing data set that shows you know every every call for service to the city but what is it what it doesn't show is all the people who don't call 311 or all the issues that don't go reported um, and we know from some cool research that uh, that both we and others have done that that there are phenomena that happen in the city that just nobody ever calls about you know like rats Here's a great example. Um, you know, there are people call three one one if they see a rat. Um, do you call three one one when you see a rat? Maybe some of you do. Maybe some of you don't. I bet you don't call three one one every time you see a rat. Um, and we know from some data that the Department of Health collects um, 
the Department of Health does these rat inspections that are called indexate inspections, which are different from the sort of complaint driven inspections. So they go to every single house in a particular neighborhood or every single building in a particular neighborhood, regardless of whether or not someone has called about a rat. And like, no surprise, they find rats that nobody called about. So I think the thing, the thing that I really think a lot about with these new models is sort of the way that I, I definitely think there's like there there are there are there are possibilities that are exciting and then there are ways that if they get deployed will just amplify sort of the biases or the the missingness of city data sets um so yeah, I I I'm I think we're I think everybody is kind of like all organizations all all of the world is kind of trying to figure this stuff out a little bit and and I think you know my the thing I really really that I hope that our office is a is a resource for is helping people kind of really understand what these models are what their limitations are what it means to have a data to have one of these models interact with a city data set um and and the different sort of nuances of those city data sets because a lot of these sort of um a lot of the a lot of the sort of use cases that people think of are are like let's let's have you know a large language model read all of this um or like have access to the 311 data set and like you know interact like tell us tell us where the neighborhoods that are having the worst problem with x are but like if you do that then you're you're not using the, you're not necessarily going to, you're going to get the answer of like which neighborhood is complaining the most about this, um, mm -hmm. which is not the same. It's not the same question. Um, so yeah, this is, this is, a, it's, it's tough stuff. And I think, you know, my, um, uh, but I know that the city has really thoughtful folks who, um, uh, you know, including Alex Ford, who, um, uh, previously served as the algorithms management policy officer. I think the city is 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 um, is working very uh, hard and quickly to try to make sure that there's policy to sort of guide folks as they start to think about ways that these tools could get applied in the government context, um, and also do it transparently so that you know any type of application or or um, use of these tools gets reported. Um, there's a there is an algorithm. Um, there's like a formal process for for reporting use of an algorithm. That data set is available in open data. Um, uh, and I think it's it's yeah, it's going to be an interesting it's going to be an interesting time. Right. Um, since we count on open data to be like the training data set um, for some of these things, uh, and we we know that these these data sets have issues, what are ways that non-city employees can improve or contribute to data sets? Um, how can they provide suggestions uh, so that way errors can be uh, improved? How can they request a data set? Um, or how can they even like add and contribute data to the open data portal? Great and this question. is the last question, by the way. Okay, cool. Um, uh, I, I'll happily, I, I, you know, I, you know, I'll talk all day if I want, uh, if you want. Um, the, uh, uh, um, the open data, again, like I know folks are like, why are you sending me to a form? But the open data help desk genuinely is the best way to um, request a data set to point out something that's wrong with the data set. So, um, the, you know, the open data, the open data, um, the data on open data is, is comes from an agency, generally speaking. Um, so the, when we hear like, oh, like this data set is, you know, for some reason, there's no data at all from October 1st, like something happened, there must have been a, pro a problem with the ETL or like that there's some something happened and like there's there's something wrong with this data. Um, what you get in touch with us via the open help the open data help desk and then we get in touch with the open data coordinator um, for that data set and we work with them to sort of um, maybe sometimes we connect them directly with people sometimes we're like oh, oh this is like a you know we know we know what happened here we can get it fixed and then you know write you back and say hey thank you so much for pointing that out like we fixed it you know you should see this now like thank you so much. Um, and same for new data sets. So especially if you know that a data set exists, 
um, uh, and is not being published on open data, um, that is, we really want to hear about those. Um, and we also, you know, there's a, uh, every year in the, in the compliance process, agencies are required to report what data sets they're planning to publish. So it's also, you know, generally good. And we'll take a look at this too, if you get in touch with us about a data set, like, is that a data set that's on the, like the roadmap for publishing? Um, yeah, thank you, Kate. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's all like, um, and I'm interested in, in, in understanding sort of the like, uh, um, I would love to, I would love to understand more too about like folks's, um, folks's uh, interest in, in contributing to data sets, because I think we, I, I don't know off the top of my head sort of like what the best, how that, how that would look, but um, I think we are all, again, we are always happy to talk to everybody about anything. Um, and if you have an idea about a way that we can make open data better or that, um, or that, you know, we could think about more kind of like citizen, um, citizen led data collection efforts. There are some citizen led data collection, um, data collections on the open data website, including the squirrel census. Um, so we, we have precedent for sort of data sets that are, that are collected by folks who are not city employees or that aren't sort of generated through the, through the process of government operations. Um, but yeah, I think um, just, yeah, talk to us. We would love we would love to work with you on almost anything that you can possibly think of if it is related to data and New York City. Great, thank you. Um, we also have a community data portal that we are uh, in the process of transitioning to our friends at DAT here. Um, so uh, if you are a community member and you're interested in helping uh, conceive of a community data portal for New York, uh, come chat with the Beta NYC uh, team. Um, because not all data set can go on the open data portal. Um, there's a reason why we uh, put some things into legislation, um, but uh, we're excited to make sure that as much information is useful for the public interest as possible. Um, that being said, thank you, Martha and the open data team for joining us. Um, we really, really enjoy your time uh, we appreciate all of the work that your entire team does for the city uh, and for our neighborhoods. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, virtual claps. Um, uh, I'm now going to hand the microphone off to our wonderful director of public programs, uh, Kate Nicholson, who is the mastermind behind the slides, the emojis, uh, and our bagel data visualization. So thank you, Open Data Team. Uh, and Kate, thank you for all the work that you've done. And I'm going to hand it off to you now. Thanks, Noel. Um, yeah, so uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, we'd like to use this time to ask folks if they have any announcements to share. Um, announcements can range from hiring announcements, um, if you're looking for a job, uh, if you have an upcoming an event or class that you want to share. Um, uh, Robert, I see you're raising your hand. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks everyone. Um, I'm in the Data Analytics and Research Unit at um, the Manhattan DA's office. We currently have two postings up for an entry level and a senior policy analyst um, with SQL knowledge being really important there. And then also a data engineering role. Um, so if you search uh, Manhattan DA uh, hiring or jobs, um, you'll find it. Cool, and if you have links, um, please put them in the chat as well. Sure. Uh, any other announcements? Um, and then I'm gonna invite Gabby um, who helps run our communication at Beta NYC to um, share some announcements that will be going out in our weekly Slack messages. Um, Gabby is the mastermind behind all the community announcements. So Gabby, feel free to come off mute uh, if no one else has something to share. The one thing I want to add, and, I, and I'm not sure if we put it in the newsletter, is that the state is looking for a chief analytics officer to run the state open data portal. Um, I will get that job description and, and share that as well. Off to you, Gab. Oh, hi, everyone. And hi, Kate. Thank you so much. And yeah, thank you for putting this event together. Everyone's just so amazing. And Yes, I do actually have a quick announcement to share, if I may. Um, so as was mentioned in the chat earlier, um, we put on an annual conference called School of Data um, with programming assistance from OTI. 
And we actually just recently launched our call for volunteers. So we're looking for people to help us run School of Data and applications are now open. So I'll actually put the link in the chat, but definitely get your applications in. It will be a great way to connect with us. And yeah, we just hope to see you there. And just thanks again, everyone for being here. Thanks, Gabby. Um, yeah, which leads me, if nobody else has announcements, um, or if you think of one, uh, please raise your hand. Um, I'm going to continue forward with some uh, additional announcements. So I think we covered this a lot, but um, this is the Open Data Help Desk. Um, you can find it if you Google NYC Open Data and then go to the Contact Us tab. Um, and Martha was explaining how there is a, a ton of different ways you can get in touch with them. Um, highly recommend it, especially if you have questions about a data set um, or about um, an error you find in a data set. Um, definitely use it. Um, the other announcements we have are that we have a lot of ways for you to stay in touch with us and engage with us. Uh, and we particularly have some fun events coming up. So I just want to briefly go over what each of these are. Um, Beta Bagels obviously is this type of event where we want to engage the public with um, what people are doing with open data and technology and government. Uh, open Data Week is coming up. It's March 16th through the 24th. And it's a week-long festival where people like yourselves or organizations come and share what they're doing with open data. Um, so there will be over 75, uh, around 75 or so events throughout the week. Um, many of them, most of them are virtual, so it's pretty easy to tune in. Um, I would love to ask Zachary or um, do you want to share anything about Open Data Week uh, in addition to that? But yeah. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Um, I, I would say I think we've been talking that we're going to be posting the program in the next um, the coming weeks on open-data.nyc. But also um, this year, we have not only virtual events, but also a lot more in-person ones. Open Data Week before the pandemic was entirely in person. Um, during the pandemic, um, the height of the pandemic was was all virtual, and now we've gone back to a, a nice mixture. So um, if you want to stay at your computer, there are certainly options for that. Um, but also, if you want to see and meet different people that use open data in many different ways throughout the city. Um, you can do that as well. We have some outdoor events too, since open data is a little bit later this year, and hopefully we will continue with some of the really lovely weather that we've been having. Yeah, this year's festival is slightly later in the month of March, um, and so fingers crossed the weather will cooperate. Um, yeah, and what else? So at the end of Open Data Week is Beta NYC's annual community conference called School of Data. And that takes place at CUNY School of Law. Um, and it's a full day of conference event that's jam packed with fun sessions for you to attend all about open data in New York City. Um, we love it. It's a day to meet people in the civic tech and public interest tech community in New York City. Um, and lastly, if you're kind of like, what is open data? I'm new to this world. Um, highly recommend that you check out the Open Data Ambassadors classes. We offer monthly classes that give you a totally introductory level um, class or training on what open data is, how you can access it, um, walking you through the steps of going to the website, looking at a data set, reading it, asking questions about it. Um, and every class is taught by uh, a trained volunteer um, from New York City that is interested in sharing knowledge about open data with people like you. So, um, check out those classes. They're monthly throughout the year. And then during Open Data Week, they will be daily. Um, so everyone will have an opportunity to get a sort of 101 intro to open data. Um, that's it, I think. There, oh, the last one is um, Beta NYC's links. Um, if you go to that link, um, you will find resources that we share regularly, such as our newsletter. Um, events, our Slack channel, uh, come participate, get involved. And that's it. Thank you. Thank well, you, Noelle. Thank you, Martha. Um, really appreciated this time with you. Um, it's great to hear from you. Noelle, passing it back to you. Thank you again, Kate. I'm going to stop recording here. Uh...